Hi, so this is just a quick video to demonstrate how to use the empirical rule. Um, just a few extra practice questions here. All right, so first, the empirical rule um, only works when we're dealing with what's called a normal distribution or a bell-shaped curve, kind of like is being shown on the screen right now. Um, and the idea is we can break down this curve into intervals. Um, the curve is always centered on the mean, um, which if you're dealing with a population is the Greek letter mu. Or if it was a sample, we would write X bar instead, but we'll focus on population symbols uh, for today. It's exactly the same. It was a sample. All right, so the empirical rule applies if we have this bell curve. Um, and what it states is that 68% of the curve, 68% of the people or whatever objects you're looking at, will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Um, so it'll be in this group right here. 95% will be within two standard deviations. So in this interval right here, and 99.7% or pretty much everybody will be within three standard deviations. And again, this only works if you are dealing with a normal distribution. And these are approximations. Um, so we could be off slightly, um, especially if we're not dealing with a perfect bell curve. But if you're dealing with a perfect normal distribution, these will work out really well. Um, because of symmetry, um, we do know a few other facts. Um, we know that to the right of the mean is 50%. So everything to the right of the mean is 50%. And everything to the left of the mean is also 50%. And that's not directly the empirical rule. That's just some facts we know about symmetric distributions. Um, and we can use these facts um, to even break down our rules from before. Like for example, we know that 68% falls within one standard deviation of the mean, so in that group. So instead of saying 68% falls within one standard deviation, we could say 34% or half of it fall um, between the mean and one standard deviation and above, and 34% fall between the mean and one standard deviation below. All right, so um, the idea here is we're going to use our basic empirical rule, what I like to call the 68, 95, 99.7% rule, um, and apply it to questions where we know the distribution is normal. Um, and again, keeping in mind that we can break things down because of symmetry. All right, um, so let's start off with some facts. Um, so IQ scores are known to follow a normal distribution. Um, the average IQ is designed to be 100. So we can write that mu is 100. Um, the standard deviation is approximately 17, so we'll just say it's 17. Um, and based on that, we can answer a whole bunch of questions. Um, we can apply the empirical rule and we can apply the empirical rule because we're told that IQ scores are normally distributed. So again, that empirical rule is that whole 68%, 95%, 99.7% rule. All right, so suppose you're asked the question, something like what percent of the population um, has IQ scores? between 83 and 117. Okay, so I know I'm going to use the empirical rule. And so let's draw out our curve. And I'm just kind of drawing a bell here. Um, I know it's centered around 100, so that's the mean. If I go one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below, a standard deviation is 17. So I want to add 17 onto 100. That gives me 117. But also subtract 17, and that gives me 83. Well, that's the exact interval I want, actually. So what I did here is I want to know the percentage of the population that has IQ scores between 83 and 117. And I also know that that's exactly one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. And based on the empirical rule, we know 
of the population falls in that interval. All right, so let's do a um, slightly harder one. In fact, let's finish drawing our um, little sketch here. Okay, so um, let's see, if we go another standard deviation above, a standard deviation is 17. So if we add 17 onto 117, we get 134. That's basically just taking the average and adding two standard deviations to it. And if we add three standard deviations, we get 151. Okay, so subtract standard deviation on the lower end, we get 66. So again, that's the average minus two standard deviations. And if we subtract another standard deviation, we get 49. Uh, I'm trying to keep all these um, these um, lines about the same distance apart. I realize this isn't perfect, but it's just a quick hand drawing. Again, the empirical rule says 68% would fall in this middle group, 95% would fall in this group here, and 99.7% would fall here. Okay, so let's answer a few more questions based on this figure, the sketch that we made. All right, so let's answer the question, what percent of people have IQs that are at least 134. Okay, so what we want is we want to know this area. This area is going to represent the percentage of people that have IQ scores that are at least 134. And I'm not just shading between 134 and 151. I'm shading beyond 151 as well. I want to know everything to the right of 134. All right, so there's several ways we can handle this. Um, one way is we know that 68% falls within one standard deviation, 95% falls within two. So 95% of our data or our people fall between 66 and 134. Okay. So let me write that. I know 95% fall in this group here. Well, if 95% fall in this group, that means 5% would fall outside of that group. And because of symmetry, that 5% has to be split between the two tails. So uh, 5%, so half of 5% is going to be in this red region. So 5% divided by two is gonna be in that region. And then 5% divided by two is gonna be in this region. So just to be clear here, we're saying, well, let's see, 5% divided by two, what is that? Well, five divided by two is two and a half. So we're talking about two and a half percent. So two and a half percent is going to be to the right of 134, and two and a half percent is gonna to be to the left of 66, or basically it would be IQ, people with IQs less than 66 points. So um, anyway, to answer the question here, our answer would just be two and a half percent. All right, let's do one more question. Again, let's pull up our little chart that we made to use the empirical rule. All right, so suppose we want to ask the question, what percent, or what proportion they could ask also, what percent of people have IQ scores between, uh, let's say, 117 points and 134 points? There's several ways we can answer this question. Um, again, looking at our graph here, we know that 68% is in this region. Oh, and just to be very clear, um, the region that we actually want to analyze is between 117 and 134, so that's over there. We know 68% is in this red region. We know that 95% is in this yellow region. Okay. But we really only want to look at the right half of those things. Um, in other words, I don't really care about this whole left side. I'm on the right side. So let's, let's sit there instead. Um, 
All right, so let's retackle this question. Okay, so if I'm only really interested in the right side here, we could say that, just again, to be kind of clear, we're interested in just what this number is. What is that area? Well, I know by the empirical rule that 68% falls between 83 and 117. Well, half of 68% is 34%. So 34% is just in this region, which isn't the region I want. I know 95% is in the next group, is in these groups. So half of that would be 47.5%. So 47.5% would be in this group right here. And this looks a little confusing, but 47.5% is in this red region that I boxed in, but 34% we don't want. So if I just subtract off that 34%, I would get, let's see, 13.5%. Um, so that's my answer. That's, that's the red region that I want. This red region over here is 13.5%. That's my answer. It might have seemed a little bit confusing, but we do actually have another chart that I showed you at the beginning that might help here. Um, right, when we looked at this version of the empirical rule, we said that 13.5%, same number, fell between one standard deviation above the mean and two standard deviations above the mean. And those are the exact values that we were looking at, um, right? Our mean was 100, one standard deviation above is 117, another standard deviation above is 134, and that's the region we wanted. So we could have really just looked at this chart as just the empirical rule phrased another way to have gotten our answer. All right, um, so that's the idea between, behind this homework. You just want to um, look at the empirical rule, um, play around with shading the graph, and use that to answer the questions. All right, and um, as always, let me know if you have any questions.